Okay, so what I've done is I have done enough rows that you can start to see it come through the bottom. Now what the cool trick is, all you're going to do is take the string that you had cast onto here in the beginning and just pull it. And what that does is help close off the pattern, and which will create the, um, the bottom effect as you see on here and create it like a tube. So once you get there like that, what I usually do is I try to weave in the, um, I'll use my crochet hook. Well, first I gotta tighten it a little more here. Oops, I just undid it here. Okay, so I gotta find which strand. Okay, there we go. So you make sure you pull it tight, and then what you can do while it's still on the loom, because it's tight, is kind of just bring it through a little bit. Um, so you can kind of tie off. Do not cut any strands. I do not cut anything off until I'm all the way done. Um, I think I find one. There we go. So you're going to pull it through just to kind of create that, you know, cinching it tight so that it's closed. Um, I did mess up there a little bit, but that's one because I grabbed the wrong string. So that creates what we call like the bowl bottom part. And now all you're going to do is work until this is as big as you want it. If you want it this big, you're going to go pretty much, you know, Tills about that width or that length. So basically, it's however tall you want the flower to stand up, is how much you do it on here. So keep going until it's as tall as you want, and then I'll show you how I take it off. Okay, here's the stem, and I've already enclosed the tongue depressor in there. You just tuck that in there, and now with it inside, you're going to cast off these so that you can actually have the stem all done. So let me make sure I get all my <coughs> tools, okay? So what I usually do, and you can cast off any way that you probably see fit. If you feel a different way is going to be better. Um, I've also won a few more inches so that I have something to play around with once it's actually closed off to loop string through to attach the flower to it. Um, I'm, but I might go around, just, you know, again, all I was doing was going around so there'd be three loops on each peg, and then taking the bottom loop over the top loop. Now you could try other stitches and see how it works. You basically just want a type of stitch that is going to make it so that you can't see the tongue depressor, which you can't see with the stitch. <clears throat> that is why I like this one. So just take the bottom loop over the top. Okay. And push it down in. See how it's gonna work. And that's gonna give you a little bit of playing room. <coughs> So now you're going to want to cast off. And what I usually do is I take one set of rows off of one side, and I take these loops, and I put them on this peg. And make sure you get them both. And then I take the bottom two loops over the top two loops. So it's like that. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Take these two loops off and transfer them to that peg. I mean, you can turn it around, it doesn't really matter. <clears throat> Again, take the bottom two loops over the top two loops. <clears throat> and then what you're going to do is take these loops and bring them over. Make sure you get them both to there. This one there. Again, take the bottom two over the top two. And then, grab your crochet hook. Now you can use a different size. This one is a size G, but I'd almost recommend a slightly bigger size. I just couldn't find mine tonight. And then all you're going to do is take the loop off, put it on your crochet hook, Take those loops off. So you have two sets on your crochet hook. Pull them through. Okay, and we're done with that. So we'll set that over there. So now you have the one on there. So you're going to take and wrap it around once and pull that string through. Oh. Oops, first cut yourself off some string so it'll actually come through. And then pull it tight. And you should be able to feel that right about here is where the tongue depressor ends, so it's going to give us this room to play around with to take the flower off. So this is how you take the stem off, and again, I wouldn't really worry about 
threading it through, keep the string on it until we're ready to piece it all together. So that is cast off. Now it's time to do the flower. I did not do this one as deep as I did the other one. Um, I was just trying something else. So I did this one a little less probably deep than I did this one. Um, I would also recommend trying different yarns to see what kind of texture they they create. Um, try different stitches again as well. I mean, it's pretty much up to you what you want to do. So, I mean, don't feel like you have to do it my way. This is just to give you a rough idea of how to do it. And then what I did is you make sure you have enough yarn. So let me set that down. Get enough yarn to cast it off. And what we're going to do here is the same idea that we did on the other one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Is we're going to... We're going to do it slightly different than the other one, actually. You're going to take these two loops off. You're going to put them on your crochet hook, but before you go to the next peg, you're going to actually do a loop. Do one loop onto your crochet hook. Oh, it's going to be tricky because this yarn is a little thinner and wants to break or thin up, so I should have used a different yarn. But you're going to pull it through so it creates one loop, and then pick up the next one. And you're going to pull that through. And then before you pick up the next one, you're going to create that loop, bring a loop through. Okay, and you're going to move on to the next one. So do that all the way around. It should not take you any time at all. Because this is a pretty small loom. So. so that's all I'm doing. I have to pull it closer to me to actually get it to do what I want. Okay, so you're just pulling that around, bring that through, get the next set of loops on there, pull the back ones over the top, create your loop, go through, get the next ones, pull them up front, get a loop, go through, Get the next ones off of the loom, put them on your hook, pull them back through, make a loop, pull it through, get the next ones off, pull it over, like that. So do that to you all the way around. So I'm just off camera doing that right now because it's a little easier to do. And then once you get to the end one, get your scissors ready. Okay, I would definitely advise using a better type of yarn because this one's not totally cooperating like it should. So it might not look as well as the other one because this yarn is really thin and therefore it's causing a little bit of issues. Now this is the last peg that we're going to take off. So we put it on there. After we did our loop, pull that through and then you can kind of just set that down and then you're going to take your scissors and cut yourself off from that because you don't need it. Create another loop. Oops. 